Oh, Senators, I have the following message to pass to you. I wish to report to the Senate that pursuant to Standing Order 48, I received the following message from the Speaker of the County Assembly of Meru regarding the passage by the County Assembly of a motion pursuant to Article 181 of the Constitution and Section 33 of the County Governments Act for the removal from office by way of impeachment of Honorable Kawira Mwangaza, the Governor of Meru County. The message was transmitted to the Senate via letter reference number M, stroke cares, stroke volume 4, stroke 43, dated Thursday 26, October 2023, signed by the Speaker of the County Assembly of Meru and received in my office on Friday 27th, October 2023. Now, pursuant to Standing Order 48.5 of the Senate, I shall now report the message to the Senate. This is to inform you that on Wednesday, the 25th day of October 2023, the County Assembly of Meru, via the resolution of the Assembly and pursuant to the provisions of Article 181 of the Constitution of Kenya, 2010, Section 33 of the County Governments Act, 2012, as read together with the provisions of Standing Order Number 65 of the County Assembly of Meru, Standing Orders, approve the motion to remove from office the governor of Meru County by way of impeachment. The purpose of this letter is to, therefore, inform you of the formation resolution and to forward the same to your esteemed office in line with the provisions of Section 332A of the County Governments Act 2012 and Standing Order 65-6 of the County Assembly of Meru Standing Orders for your further action. Attached herewith, please find a, a schedule containing the bundle of documents, records containing evidence adduced, notes and records of proceedings before the County Assembly for your reference and records. Senator Sifuna, just walk in. Now, honorable senators, as stated in the letter from the Speaker of the County Assembly of Meru, the following documents were forwarded to the Senate, being the record of the proceedings of the County Assembly and the evidence adduced in support of the impeachment motion. One, copy of approved notice of motion for the proposed removal from office of the governor dated 16th of October, 2023. Two, order papers for the County Assembly sittings held on Tuesday, 17th October, morning sitting, and Wednesday, 25th October, 2023, morning sitting. Three, certified Hansard reports of the Assembly, sittings held on Tuesday, 17th of October, 2023, morning sitting, and Wednesday, 25th October, 2023, morning sitting. Four, certified Hansard reports of the Assembly sittings held on Wednesday, 18th of October, 2023, afternoon, uh, afternoon sitting, and Wednesday, 14th June, 2023, afternoon sitting. Five, copy of certified signatures of county assembly members in support of the impeachment motion for the removal from office of the governor of Meru County, dated 25th of October, 2023. Certified copy of a roll call vote of Wednesday, 25th of October, 2023, on the motion for the impeachment of the governor of Meru County. Copies of the County Assembly reports referred to during the debate on the motion for removal of the Governor of Meru County. To it, A, report of the Select Committee on the County Budget and Appropriations uh, on the Budget Estimates of the County Government of Meru for the financial year 2023-2024, uh, dated 13th June 2023. B, report of the Sectoral Committee on Justice, Legal Affairs and Cohesion on the Compliant by His Excellency the Deputy Governor, Meru County, to the County Assembly against his alleged exclusion from the County Executive Committee meetings and non-facilitation of his office dated 17th of October 2023. And C, response to petition number four of 2023, urging the County Assembly of Meru to investigate the alleged illegal employment of traffic marshals by, his excellent, by Her Excellency, the Governor, Meru County, and alleged illegal traffic charges by the Meru County Enforcement Department. Copy of a letter reference number 
Dome, stroke 1, 2023, dated 24th of October, 2023, by Mrs. Dunstan Omari and Associates Advocates, addressed to the Speaker of the County Assembly of Meru. Nine, copies of newspaper advertisement appearing on the Standard and Daily Nation of Wednesday, 18th of October, 2023, and copies of invoices for radio advertisement in Muya FM, calling for submission of memoranda on the notice of motion for the proposed removal from office of the governor of Meru County. 10, a HP um, flash, flash disk, 2GB, containing video annexures, evidencing the particulars alleged in the motion, as well as a voice advertisement on the public participation on the motion run on Meru FM and approved notice of motion and exhibits. 11, copy of public participation report dated 25th of October 2023 laid on the table of the assembly on Wednesday 25th October 2023. 12 copies of written memoranda, both in support and against the impeachment from different sub-counties and regions submitted to the county assembly during the public participation exercise on the motion. And lastly, a booklet of the third edition of the county assembly of Meru standing orders. Now, honorable senators, in terms of article 181 of the constitution, of the constitution section 33.3a of the county governments act and standing orders 81a, of the Senate standing orders, the Speaker of the Senate is required within seven days after receiving notice of the resolution from the Speaker of the County Assembly to convene a meeting of the Senate to hear charges against the Governor. Pursuant to Section 33.3b of the County Governments Act and Standing Order 81a of the Senate standing orders, I hereby proceed to read the charges against the Governor of Meru County as contained in the motion of impeachment by the County Assembly of Meru. Senator, kindly take a seat. Charge number one, misappropriation and misuse of county resources. The particulars of this allegation are that the governor, one, embezzled county funds through the governor's relatives, two, withdrew county funds through false claims of payment for supply, uh, supplies and services rendered by the governor's relatives despite being ineligible to tender for all supply goods to the county government. Three, paid full salaries and benefits for over a year to four high-ranking county officials despite they're not rendering any services to the county. And four, diverted and misused county resources, including funds and mot motor, motor vehicles to support the governor's private charity, dubbed Okelea, despite previous promises to keep county operations and Okelea operations separate. Charge number two, nepotism and related unethical practices. The particulars of this allegation are that the governor, one, fraudulently represented unqualified relatives as technical team for medical equipment inspection in China. Two, employed one, Edwin Mutuma Murangiri, a nephew to her husband in key county positions. And three, designated her brother-in-law, Nefat Kinyo, as director of external linkages without transparent and competitive recruitment and lastly, assigned diplomatic duties with engagement with foreign diplomats and dignitaries to unqualified relatives. Charge number three, bullying, vilification, and demeaning other leaders. The particulars of this allegation are that the governor, one, excluded the deputy governor from county executive committee meetings and other official functions. Two, engaged in bullying and posted demeaning messages about the deputy governor in WhatsApp groups known as Third Government 012 and County Admin Services, whose membership includes several officers who are subordinate to the deputy governor. Three, encouraged and condoned in subordination and the making of insulting and demeaning public utterances 
by subordinate staff, again at the deputy governor and other elected leaders. Four, encouraged and condoned the removal of the deputy governor by junior officers from official county WhatsApp forums. Arbitrarily suspended, dismissed, withdrew and frustrated staff of the office of the deputy governor. Illegally, irregularly and fraudulently haunted the deputy governor's staff out of office by purporting to accept their non-existent resignations. Arbitrarily reduced, suspended and withdrew budgetary facilitations for legitimate operations of the deputy governor's office. Threatened to inflict bodily harm again at the deputy governor orally and in a WhatsApp chat. Forcefully broke into and ransacked the deputy governor's office. 10, changed the locks to the said office. 11, arbitrarily located the deputy governor's office. 12, arbitrarily withdrew security from the deputy governor's residence. 13, persistently made demeaning public utterances against other elected leaders, despite the same issue featuring prominently in previous impeachment proceedings. 14, made insightful, insulting and demeaning remarks against other leaders by falsely accusing them of catalysis at a presidential Thanksgiving service held in Lare despite the issue arising in previous impeachment proceedings. And lastly, encouraged, connived and condoned her husband's insulting and demeaning public utterances and musical performances against other elected leaders despite the issue arising in previous impeachment proceedings. Charge number four, illegal appointments and usurpation of statutory powers. The particulars of this allegation are that the governor did the following. One, appointed Kenneth Mwiti Ryungu as chief officer without county assembly approval. Two, sent Dr. Nitoiti, CEO of the county revenue board, Paul Mwaki, CEO of liquor board, Kenneth Kimanthi Mbae, Managing Director of Meru Microfinance Corporation, and Joseph Kithure Meria, CEO, Meru County Water and Sanitation Services on indefinite compulsory leave with full salary and benefits in usurpation of powers of the appointing authorities. Three, deployed other persons to perform the functions of those sent on compulsory leave in breach of a court order. Uh, four, appointed unqualified persons as acting chief officers without the requisite competitive recruitment and recommendation from the County Public Service Board. Five, recruited traffic marshals without involving the County Public Service Board, disreg uh, disregarding the criteria for establishing county officers. Six, usurped the powers of the County Public Service Board by creating traffic marshal officers. Seven, employed an excessive workforce of over 100 personnel staff in the governor's office. Seven, eight, sorry, designated and paid various cleaners as senior staff staff, support staff, despite already having 16 support staff. And lastly, appointed four individuals to hold county offices in an acting capacity for more than six months without proper authorization. Charge number five, contempt of court. The particulars of this allegation are that the governor did the following. One, grossly violated Article 10 and 73 of the Constitution. Two, Section 7, grossly violated Section 7 of the Leadership and Integrity Act and Section 10 of the Public Officers Ethics Act by engaging in a contemptuous, stubborn refusal to obey lawful court orders. Charge number six, illegally naming a public road after her husband. <laughs> the particulars of this allegation are that the governor did the following. One, grossly violated articles 10 and 73 of the constitution and section seven and 11.1 C of the Meru Count Honors and Awards Act 2018 by naming a public road after her husband without following the applicable statutory procedures. Charge number seven, contempt of the assembly. The particulars of this allegation are that the governor did the following. One, refused to honor summons from the county assembly's sector committee 
on justice, legal affairs, and cohesion to answer questions related to the impeachment motion. Two, directed her chief of staff to send a, contem a contemptuous letter to the assembly in response to the summons for her to appear before the sacral committee. And three, through the CC finance and the county secretary refused to furnish documents to the assembly on the grounds that an audit process was underway and that the matters raised by the assembly was sub -judice. Now, honorable senators, in terms of the way forward, following the reading of the charges against the governor, standing order 81B of the Senate standing orders as read together with section 33, subsection 3B of the County Governments Act gives the Senate two options on how to proceed with the matter. The Senate may, by resolution, appoint a special committee comprising 11 of its members to investigate the matter or investigate the matter in plenary. At an appointed time during this sitting, a notice of motion for the establishment of a special committee shall be given. Should this motion be carried, the special committee will be required under section 33.4 of the County Governments Act and Standing Order 82 of the Senate to investigate the matter and to report to the Senate on whether it finds the particulars of allegations against the governor to have been substantiated. In the event that the motion for the establishment of, of a special committee does not pass, the fallback position is that the Senate shall proceed to investigate and consider the matter in plenary. In this event, I will appoint the dates on which the Senate will sit in plenary to hear and determine the charges against the governor. Honorable senators, it is noteworthy, and I wish to emphasize to all honorable senators, that when we come to the debate on the motion for the establishment of the special committee, debate on the motion shall be limited to the substance of the motion, principally whether or not to establish a special committee. It will not be a debate on the substance of the impeachment or its merits, propriety, prudence, or even the constitutionality or the legality of the process that have been preceded the submission of this matter to the Senate. It is therefore not permissible to deviate to any matters other than the motion before the Senate. In the meantime, and during the pendency of the impeachment process in the Senate, I wish to caution honorable senators to desist from publicly commenting on the merits or demerits of the impeachment motion before the it's Senate. A coincidence. Doing so will amount to anticipation of debate, which is an infringement of standing order 99. Therefore, it shall be out of order within the meaning of standing order 122 for any senator to make comments, whether written or spoken, in relation to the conduct of the governor or the impeachment process, which is outside the confines of the impeachment proceedings, as such comments may prejudice the just outcome of the process. Now, honorable senators, this is the third impeachment hearing in the 13th parliament, and the second one involving the governor in question. In, a, in undertaking this mandate, the Senate will be sitting as a quasi-judicial body and will conduct investigations into the alleged infractions of the Constitution and the law, and thereafter make its determination on the matter. As such, it is a reminder that the impeachment hearing is not just a procedural formality, but a fundamental process that plays a crucial role in upholding the principles of democracy and good governance. This hearing is one of the most crucial oversight tools and singular roles of the Senate. I conclude by urging honorable senators to exercise the highest level of responsibility on this particular matter. I thank you. Next order. Order number four, petitions. The Chairperson Standing Committee on Roads, Transport and Housing. Senator Karungo.
Senator. I just called the Chairperson Standing Committee on Roads, Transport and Housing, Labor and Social Welfare to present a report. Are you ready with your report, Senator? 